Welcome to the evening worship service of the Ripley Church of Christ. If you're visiting with us, you're our honored guest, and we invite you back any time you have the opportunity. Tonight, we have the young men leading our worship service, and we're so thankful and proud of these men for their willingness to serve God and his church. Let's all make sure we come up and continue to encourage them as they're an encouragement to us. Order of worship tonight. Leading singing will be Nathan Stanford and Cole Chapman. Reading from God's Word will be Hayden and Hunter Koo. Also Tucker Shapley. Opening prayer will be led by Tucker Shapley. Lessons will come from Sam Green, from Cooper Pounders, and from Caleb McMillan. Closing prayer will be by Cole Chapman. Once again, we'd like to welcome everybody to our Sunday night service led by our young men. Glad to see you all. Our first song will be number 508, A Wonderful Savior. 508. <clears throat> A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasure I see. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand and covers me there with His hand. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord, He taketh my burden away. He holdeth me up and I shall not be moved, He giveth me strength as my day. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there with His hand and covers me there with His hand. When clothed in His brightness transported I rise to meet Him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, His wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of His love and covers me there Next song this evening will be number 634, 634, we'll work till Jesus comes. <clears throat> o land of rest for thee, I sigh, when will the moment come, when I shall lay my armor by and dwell in peace at home. Sought at once my Savior side, no more my steps shall roam. With him I'll brave death's chilling tide and reach my heavenly home. We'll work till Jesus comes, we'll work till Jesus comes. 
Until Jesus comes and will be gathered home. Scripture will be taken from John thirteen thirty four. John thirteen thirty four. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Scripture reading will be from Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. Matthew 5, 5. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. Scripture reading this evening will be taken from Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the many blessings you've blessed us with here, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to come here tonight and worship you and learn a little bit more about you, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with those who are on our sick list, those who have lost loved ones, Lord. Um, Please heal them and give them strength and comfort, Lord. Especially be with Carson Meeks, Lord, as she's having surgery tomorrow. And keep her safe and help her doctors do the best of their abilities, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, please be with those who are overseas fighting for our freedom. Please help them to return home to their families safe and sound. Please be with the young men tonight and help them to have ready recollection of the words and the uh, sermons they've prepared, Lord. And dear Heavenly Father, thank you most of all for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. And please forgive us of our sins, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you'd like to go ahead and mark the song of invitation, it will be number 927. Number 927 will be the song of invitation. And this song is not actually in our books. If you know this song, please sing out. Some of the lyrics that you may know uh, may be a little different, but just pay attention to that. And for those who have not sang this song before, it will split off into a man and a woman's part, so just watch out for that. But we're going to sing this together. Does he still feel the nails every time I fail? Does he hear the crowd cry? So I apologize, Nathan. We're going to sing the second verse now. <laughs> no, I can't feel the nails when my children fail. I came down to die and then to rise again.
Some of you may know I always go first, and I like to say a dad joke. Uh, they say the best for last. That's why I go first. But I've been advised by my father that it's getting old for him. So I'll spare you my comedic genius for now. Tonight, I want to talk about the little things. But first, I have a personal story to tell. While at Maywood, the best church camp ever, Tucker, I was walking in the breakfast line with my friend, and a little boy named Tegan came up to us and was talking with us. He was a junior camper. He was about nine years old. But anyways, we had activities right after where the junior campers and the senior campers split off. I was a senior camper. He was a junior camper. While walking away, he says, he taps me on the shoulder and says, I hope you win. That was one of the most heartwarming things I've ever heard in my life. And I do not like the little awe moments that make everyone say, that's nice. But that touched me. And it reminded me, it made a really big, big impact on me because that, that was one of the nicest things ever. James 3.5 says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Our tongue is so little but can be used in a good way or a negative way. Another church camp experience I have was at Horizons a few weeks ago when a woman was holding a door and I went and told her to go through and held it. As more people came, Cody, in his true fashion, aggravated me because I was the one stuck holding the door. He said, ha, sucker, and then walked by. However, after that, a man came behind me and said, thank you, son. You have no idea what that can mean to some people. You have no idea how that can affect their day. And that, that stuck with me. Because sometimes, some things like holding the door for someone seems so small and insignificant. But we don't even think about it while we're doing them. The Bible has many examples of these. Like when Jesus took the little boy's fish and fed thousands with it. Something that was so insignificant, a little boy giving his lunch, fed thousands of people. David also took one little stone and killed a giant of Goliath. Then, in Matthew 13, 32, it says... It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown into a larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests on its branches. When we do the little things like holding the door or saying something kind to somebody, it often inspires others or it creates a butterfly effect of kindness that can brighten their day. Kevin Hart once said, The day you stop doing the small things is the day you stop is the day you think you're above everyone else. This quote shows that arrogance and pride are often dangerous when it comes to this, and they can stop you from doing some small things. John Wooden, the best basketball coach of all time, a man who has won ten national titles, seven of which in a row, who made UCLA into a dynasty, could be found every week sweeping his gym floor. Every week he'd come in there, sweep his gym floor. He has accomplishments that I will never reach, that this whole room may never reach. But he can be found just sweeping the gym floor, doing the small things. This shows no matter whether you're a Hall of Famer or a bench warmer, doing the small things is very important. Cole recently went on a trip to El Salvador. He doesn't speak good Spanish, as he said multiple times to us. And he said, but one thing is, a smile is very powerful. He said the little kids always wanted to talk to them, but they couldn't because of the communication barrier. But he said... They all understand what the smile meant and that the missionaries were friendly because of this smile. The Bible says in Galatians 5, 9, the little leaven leavens the whole lump. It only takes a small amount of yeast to make bread rise, like it only takes a small amount to change someone's life. God says in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also, you are also to love one another. Love can be shown through many of these little gestures that we've discussed. So this year, and more importantly, for the rest of your lives, I want to challenge you to try and do the little things for someone. The things that opening a door, having a smile, that you might not even think about. I want you to try and be kind and inspire others to do the same. Thank you. In the Bible, we see countless verses telling us as Christians to be meek. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, as seen in Matthew chapter 5. In Colossians 3 chapter 12, 
In Colossians 3, verse 12, God tells us to put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. When we study these verses, sometimes we may skim over these words and not fully understand what they mean. For me, it is the word meek. I've heard this word many times through sermons, devotionals, Bible class, and my own study, but I've never fully understood its meaning. When we first think of the word meek, it sounds like weak. It may remind you of being timid or not strong. Merriam-Webster describes meek as enduring injury with patience and without resentment. Even with this definition, it's hard to understand what being meek looks like in practice. In Matthew 5.5, 5, the word meek comes from the Greek word praeus, which can be translated as humility or gentleness. In some cases, it can mean strength under control. In ancient Greece, war horses were trained to be meek, strong and powerful, but under control and serving their master. By far the best example of meekness for us as Christians is Jesus. Matthew 11:29 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. We see Jesus' meekness revealed to us when he obeyed his Father's will and sacrificed himself on the cross. As he bled and died for our sins, he could have easily ended his suffering and taken himself off of the cross, but he didn't. Jesus is the very definition of being meek. Jesus is all-powerful, but he still suffered on our behalf. Sometimes we sing the song, He Could Have Called 10,000 Angels. In this song, the words show God's all-power and also God's perfect control over his actions. Jesus has shown his life as an example for us. When we take on the attributes of Jesus, like meekness, God has promised us a heavenly home with him. Going back to Matthew 5.5, 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. From the world's point of view, this seems like a major contradiction. The world believes that people who are meek, self-controlled, self-sacrificing, have no chance to inherit the earth. They get pushed around or walked over, right? But according to the Bible, the world is wrong. Knowing Jesus reminds us that he will act for us. He will act on our behalf. Psalms 37, 8-9 says, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. In verse 11 it says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Being meek is not the absence of power or strength. It's the fullness of it. When we are meek, like Jesus was meek, we begin to learn self-control and patience. It is through this connection with Jesus that we receive the gift of eternal life. If you want to be baptized for the remission of your sins or need the prayers of the church, Please come when we have our invitation song. Friday night we went to Alabama to go to a singing, and there was this one song that like it really hit different. It was so powerful to me. Uh, it's called "The God on the Mountains," and in the song, uh, I'll, I'll read the lyrics. It says, "For." The God on the mountain is still the God in the valley. When things go wrong, he will make them right. And the God of the good times is still the God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God in the night. This reminded me of the verse in uh, Deuteronomy 31, verse 8. Uh, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Do not, be, do not fear uh, nor be dismayed. So I want to talk about two things tonight. God is with us in the good times, and God is with us in the bad times. Let's start off with the bad times, though. 
Um, in James uh, chapter 1, verse 17, we see James is talking about temptation here. And he says to us that every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Um, God does not change when uh, bad times fall on us. He is always with us when we fall away. And he's always with us every single day of our life. Um, and whenever we fall into this darkness, God has given us this way out. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 10.13, it says that there is no temptation that has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. God is with you through these bad times, but he is also with you through these good times. But what are good times? Are there, are there good times besides these trials and tribulations that we have every single day? Just look around you right now and just notice how great this day is today. We are here spending time with our brothers and sisters in Christ, worshiping our God. This is a good time. And I'm reminded of Psalm 23, um, and talking about how he lies us down in the green pastures. He leads us beside these quiet waters. He refreshes our soul. He guides us along the right paths for his name's sake. And I'm thinking right now that he has led us to this place. He is the one that we follow, that we um, are with at all times, that he is with us for all times. But when we're in these good and bad times, do we, do we pray to God? Do we try to stay with God? Do we think of Him? Do we read His holy scriptures to learn more about God? Just as, God, just, just as we want God uh, with us in every single moment, God wants us to be with Him in every single moment. He even gives us this choice to spend life with Him eternally, uh, eternally in a good time or eternally in a bad time. Um, in Romans it says, For the wages of sin are death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Peter tells us that, what we should do. He says to repent and be baptized, every one of us, for the uh, forgiveness of our sins, that we may receive that gift of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. If you are in any need, in need of Christ right now, if you would, please come as we stand and as we sing. As you can see, I am not a young person. I tried to get one of them to do this announcement, but they didn't want to do that, so it left it with me. We are so glad to have everyone here tonight, and we're so proud of these young men and the great job that they have done in conducting our worship service. I think uh, we can all truly say that our future is bright here at Ripley, and these young people's future are bright, not just uh, young men, but our young ladies uh, as well. Uh, we're so proud of all of them. Um, Caleb mentioned the singing that we went to Friday night, and um, we had seven or eight of our young people that went to that. They sang for two, two and a half hours while we were there, and then they sang for an hour and a half on the way back in the back of the bus, and it was beautiful. I, I just, I wish all of you could have heard uh, those young voices 
singing uh, praises to God in the bus on the way back. It was um, it was really amazing, and uh, uh, just we're so so blessed uh, here at this congregation. I had just a few announcements before we uh, dismiss uh, this evening. Uh, as always, we want to uh, continue to pray for Carson. She goes in the morning for her surgery at Le Bonner. Uh, so we uh, want to remember her and Sonny and Karen as they go through this and pray that everything will be uh, well with that. It's good to uh, have Mr. Billy McBride with us here this evening. He's been on our prayer list too, been going through uh, cancer treatments, and we're glad of the report that he's gotten. We're so happy to see him uh, here this evening with us. Continue to pray for others that are... Um, Battling uh, cancer as well, Kathy Hurst's sister, Jan Rooker, starting cancer treatments, uh, or is starting them. And also remember Lennox Kennemore, a young first grade student at Ripley Elementary who has been diagnosed with leukemia, and he has also started treatments. And add to your prayer list uh, Sam Vaughn uh, of our community. His wife, Shana, is a teacher at, Ripley, at the Ripley High School. Uh, he had uh, found out that he has kidney cancer, but the doctors are uh, confident that they can treat him for this. And also add to your prayer list Dr. Tommy Simpson, who's been going through uh, treatments also for cancer, radiation, and chemotherapy. He will end those treatments this week, uh, but he still has a lot of healing left to do. Uh, also remember that all those that have lost loved ones, especially the Dan Elder family, his service was this afternoon. Continue to pray for Sister Mary Lou and her family during this time. Uh, our summer series will begin this coming Wednesday night. Reed Swindle from the uh, Foot Street Congregation in Corinth will be our speaker this Wednesday. So we invite you to come and uh, be with us for that. It will be, I, be, I believe, very uplifting to all. Uh, that will be here. The uh, 5K run will be August the 13th. That's on a Saturday morning. Uh, Sign-up sheets in the foyer for anyone willing to help. So if you can or are willing to do that, please do that or see Cody for uh, he can give you more information on that. Also, we'll have an area-wide youth night here at, the current, at uh, Ripley on the 21st uh, at 5 o'clock. Uh, food will be provided, but there is a sign-up list in the foyer for desserts and drinks that, uh, that we need to get. So if you're interested in helping with that, uh, there's a sign-up sheet for that. If there's anyone here who has not had the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper, you may be dismissed at our closing song. Go out the uh, auditorium, turn to your right, in the last room on your left, and there will be someone there to assist you. Closing song will be number 869, and we'll sing the first and last verse and have our closing prayer. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known, join in a song which we have for, join in a song which we have for, and thus surround the throne, and thus surround the throne, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you blessed us with, for the spirit of worship we have had together. We pray that everything that we have done this morning and this evening has been pleasing in your sight. Lord, we're thankful for the rain. We're thankful for all the blessings you give us each and every day. We know we cannot count them. Lord, we know there are so many 
on our hearts and minds today, especially on our sick list. We think of all those who are being affected by cancer, such a horrible disease, and we know that each of us have someone in our lives who has been affected by it in some way. We pray now for those going through treatments, Lennox Kinnamore, um, Jan Rooker who will start treatments, Dr. Simpson, um, Sam Vaughn, and any others who may be battling any kind of disease. And then we're always so happy when we can thank you for good news, especially thinking about cancer, and we're so thankful for Mr. Billy McBride's good news, and we pray that we will continue to hear good news from the report, upcoming reports. Lord, also be with those who will have upcoming surgeries and procedures. We think especially of Carson Meeks tonight, and we just pray so much and fervently that that will go well, and you will be with all the medical staff that will be taking care of her in the morning. Lord, we also know there are many on our hearts and minds who have lost loved ones in recent times. We think of the Sanderson family, the Hodges family, the Moore family, and especially this evening we think of the Dan Elder family. We pray that you will wrap your loving arms around them, especially Miss Mary Lou, and bring only the comfort that you know how to bring. Lord, we're so thankful for all that you do for us each and every day, and Lord willing, we look to a future and a future events here, if you will allow it. Please be with our 5K, upcoming 5K, the summer series that will begin this Wednesday night, our area-wide youth night, just all the, the good that we are trying to do for your kingdom. Please bless that. And Lord, we also ask you to be with all those who will be starting back school this coming week as they start a new school year. Pray for safety and wellness and that everything will go well for this school year. And also this week be with Miss Donna Smiths and, and um, all her tests and keep them safe as they travel for those. Lord, we, we know that you are our God and we are so thankful for that. And help us to take what these young men have told us tonight and apply it to our lives. Help us to remember to do the little things for people, how much they can matter, and help us to be humble um, in your service and help us to always remember that you are our God and our God alone in the good times and the bad times. Lord, be with us now as we go from this place. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.